Welcome to my channel, Level Headed with Levi D. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button, and set the bell notification to all. If you currently are not getting my notifications, please turn the bell setting to none and turn back on to all. Please also share this. Let's get into it. Hey, uh. Don't wait up. I've been working hard every day, living dreams for a paste up. Yeah, straight up. Five years later, like I said, I would make it on my way up. It's all love. Coming from the nation, made a foundation, true stuff, yeah, too tough. We ain't giving up on our dreams, everything is ahead of us. Stay true to your past, it's not where you start, it's all where you're at. It's where you end up when your back's to the mat. Do you cripple the flat or get up off your back? Deliver these facts to see them react. The stadium's packed, they all gonna snap. The motivated attract, the isolated attack, the frustrated hit back. Yeah, we move fast. I wanna change everything. channel today we will be covering missing andrea knoble i'm trying to share my screen here i uh happened to stumble across this one on twitter today and uh saw the sister um one sister i don't know if there's one sister or two sisters I just recently got into, like, I just ran across this like an hour ago. And I was debating what to do. There's a big, long storyline here. This has been out for a while. Um, we're going to play a couple of things. You're going to watch as I watch to get caught up on this thing. But uh, it's a very interesting things that have gone on here. So I just want to um, update people on that I'm going to be looking into this one myself and uh, anybody is uh, welcome to research with me as uh, we dig through hours and hours of videos and uh, footage that is put out there already on this one. And uh, this is definitely one that uh, is going to make the head spin a little bit here. So hold on here one second and then I'll get started. We'll read our poster. And then uh, we'll go over uh, some of the things that I found. And then uh, there's some videos that I want to watch that uh, are on other platforms. So hold on one second.
Here I am. Sorry, it's storming here. So I had to, uh, the light's not as, as well because they usually use natural light coming off of the um, window here. So I want to read this other poster though because it tells more stuff here. Hold on one second. I'll read this one and then I'll show you the other poster as I filter through the stuff. So, uh, so this is missing. Have you seen Andrea Knobel? Uh, there's a reward. Where is Andrea Knobel on Facebook for reward details? Uh, join the case discussion on Facebook. There's a Facebook thing there. I'll, um, after this live, I will, um, I'll put the Facebook information into the, um, description of this video. Um, she was 40 years old, five foot seven, 190 pounds, brown hair, brown hair with blonde highlights, hazel green eyes, no tattoos missing since August 13th, 2019 from a Dubon Park in Louisville, Kentucky. Call or text 502-75. Sorry, let's start over. Call or text 502-574-7120. Private investigator number is 502-618-9337. So some of this stuff isn't going to make sense here at the beginning as we're going over this. Um, just bear with me because it's a plethora of information that I was not ready for. Um, I'm going to play some of the stuff. It's probably not going to make sense to you as it hasn't made sense to me yet. And I want to know more. Um, there's going to be a couple of videos that I played now. Um, there is a Twitter page and that's where I did stumble across this app was on Twitter. Um, we're going to start right here with this video here on her back door. She jumped up only to realize it was Andrea. She was still locked out of the house. No matter in her job, mainly because of the guy that she was dating at the time. Andrea just wasn't herself. She was struggling and no matter how much help she was offered, she wouldn't accept it. So Aaron dropped her off and returned home, going to sleep with her children. At 1.30 a.m. on now August 13th, Aaron was woken up to the sound of someone banging on her back door. She jumped up only to realize it was Andrea. She was still locked out of the house. No matter what Aaron did, Andrea was not calming down. So Aaron had to set boundaries for herself, telling Andrea that she needed to leave. But no one could have ever imagined this would be the last time Andrea was ever seen. But we are nowhere near done. Part two is on the playlist. So I haven't seen part two and I can't find part two, but uh, I only had a few minutes to prepare for this live. So when there is a part two, we'll play part one and part two in the future. But uh, I want to go back here, take this off screen for a second. Um, so that's kind of interesting. There's a poster here that I need to find real quick that will help make more sense. There was searches. There was a whole bunch of stuff that's been done already. Um, let's go to photos. All right, this is the one I wanted to show you. So it says missing 911, Andrea Knoebel, um, has all the other details on there. But this says Andrea was last seen on August 13th, 2019, wearing a light colored tank top, white cotton shorts and Nike tennis shoes. She had a flat white purse she kept in her back pocket and her cell phone. Neither have been located. Andrea's Andrea was seen on foot and said to be headed to her mother's home. She has not had any contact with family or friends 
since then, which is very unusual for her. If you have any information regarding her whereabouts, please contact um, 502-574-7120 or private investigator 502-618-9337. Um, we are going to um, take this down just for one second, and then uh, we're going to start with we're going to start with this. This is um, this is going to be a video uh, by a news station that was done uh, July. Uh, Ju I think it was June. Hold on here. Uh, June 11th, I believe. Nope, I'm sorry. Um, so this is April 2021 was when this was posted. But uh, it's a news uh, little thing here. So we're going to play this one. Andrea Knabel was last seen in this neighborhood in the Ottoman Park area. A community is shocked when mother of two, Andrea Knabel, vanishes into thin air. We did multiple interviews. We have developed some, some pretty good leads. But cryptic clues and a murky timeline leave little evidence behind. When we're trying to retrace someone's steps, we'll use any means necessary. And in a shocking twist, this mother, who had a passion for helping find missing people, becomes a victim herself. None of the normal scenarios were happening. It was just really disturbing. How did she just disappear? Someone might have hurt her, or that they could still be hurting her. Anything's a possibility at this point still. My name's Erin Knabel, and my sister Andrea has been missing since August 13th, 2019. Growing up in their hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, Erin always looked up to her older sister. She was three years older than me and my little sister. We called her mother Andrea. Going down again, 4th of July party. Party every day. At 29 years old, Andrea fulfills a lifelong dream. She finally becomes a mother. Andrea has two sons. They're eight and six, and they're really good kids. They're really smart, just like her. She always would make sure that they had home-cooked meals. It's a crazy day. Her house was kind of the fun house. Happy Fourth of July! That all the kids around the neighborhood would want to go play at. And her generosity reaches far beyond her family. Andrea got involved in Missing in America in 2016. It's a volunteer organization that helps search for people. Tracy Leonard is a private investigator. She volunteered for him when she did Missing in America, and she actually helped him uh, find a 15-year-old boy, and I think he was really impressed with her skills. Her work, along with you know our, the rest of our investigators, were able to find this uh, teenager and get them home. So. Yeah, she became a friend of mine. But on August 12th, 2019, Andrea is the one in dire need of help. Andrea was living with my mother, of course, and she was there with Sarah and Ethan. Both of her sons are with their dads. Sarah is my little sister, and then Ethan is her fiance. They had some type of disagreement. Maybe a sarcastic comment was said. So, you know, just a normal family thing. Andrea leaves to blow off some steam. But when she gets home around 11.30 p.m., the doors are locked. She couldn't get into the house when she got home. They were asleep. She walked to my house. It was just a few streets over from my mother's house. Andrea's I want to back this up just for one second. I want to see this map. So I got one block, two blocks, Three blocks, four blocks, five blocks, six blocks, and we'll just call that, we'll call that one 
six and a half, seven blocks here. I might be completely wrong. Hold on here. One, two. I mean, they're pretty big blocks. Uh, I'm curious to know how far this is. That's a, it, it looks quite far on this thing. A lot of houses in between. Um, we're going to continue on. Thank you guys for being here. Um, there is a whole bunch of other stuff that's coming up. This is one of our own that uh, was helping find missing people. That's why I wanted to make this um, priority today to go over. And she's still missing. Her um, sister, Emily, that is in this film here that we just were watching is... Um, is the one that runs her Twitter page. She does share other missing peoples uh, that are out there. Um, somehow I just stumbled across the page. Uh, I think I followed it a while ago and I found it interesting. They did do a Dr. Phil segment and that is something that we will be watching here in a little bit is the Dr. Phil segment on it. Um, we just all need to read uh, some of this is speculation that is played in these videos. Uh, not proven by the police. Uh, there's a, a lot of videos out there and a lot of information. And um, it's something that uh, if you like true crime, this is one that you really want to dig in and take a look at all the stuff. Uh, I don't know anybody here that's in chat. Have you guys heard of this case? Uh, put a one if you've heard of this case. She, she was helping the missing in America. Sorry, answering your uh, question here. Uh, she, zero. <laughs> Checking with the zero. Uh, she was helping um, missing in America, and she worked for that private, well, she was volunteering for that private investigator. So it, it a lot of times, uh, a lot of the work is done by keyboard and then uh, following up the leads uh, after the fact. So, um. As we all know, and search and dig and look for stuff that there's a lot of information that is found and then piecing it all together to put it out there. Um, oh, so you guys have heard of this one. Cool. All right. We're going to get back to the video here. Just a few streets over from my mother's house. Andrea's had some troubles lately. Uh, she was laid off from her job and she had car problems. There's just one thing after another. She was just upset. She told me she was sad that they had argued that day. We talked and it eventually got kind of late and it was a work night for me and my kids were asleep. So I told her I was ready to go to sleep and that she should try to go home and rest. And I told her I'd call her parents to get them to let her in. I just expected it to blow over and the next day everything would be okay. But everything wouldn't be okay. In the early hours, Andrea leaves her sister's house to walk home alone. The next day uh, in the morning, I send her a message telling her that I was sorry. And so, so she left her mom's house to go to her sister's house is what I gathered there. So uh, she couldn't get in at her mom's house, left, went to her sister's house. I'm going to back this up because I just want to make sure that I hear this right. Oops. All right. I'm going to replay this because it looks looks to like to me, for some reason, she left from her sister's house to go back to her mom's house. So uh, we may have to watch this one more time. In the early morning hours, Andrea leaves her sister's house to walk home alone. The next day uh, in the morning, I send her a message telling her that I was sorry and that I loved her. She didn't respond. My first thought was that she's just upset, so I thought maybe she was just cooling off somewhere. I made a post on Facebook just because I knew everyone would see it. I was hoping that one of them would say, oh, I talked to her. She's fine. But it didn't happen. And we have a group text where we talk to our family members. And I asked if anyone had talked to Andrea, and everyone said no. Two days later, and still no sign of Andrea. 
I checked with her best friend. Um, it took her a couple of days to reply. On the fourth day is when I found out from her that she hadn't heard from her. So that's when I knew that something was seriously wrong. And I reported her missing. I'm Detective Mike Lauder of the Louisville Metro Police Department Missing Persons Unit. I'm the lead detective on the Andrea Knable missing persons case. By August 17th, 2019, Andrea Knable has been missing for four days. Once I get the report and start talking to the reporting party, which was Erin Knable, Andrea's sister, it's important to trace back her steps through whatever means necessary. Witnesses, phone records, Facebook Messenger, social media, the family handed over Andrea's laptop. And we were able to access Google Timeline and her Facebook Messenger through her laptop. What the Google Timeline shows is eye-opening. The Google Timeline eventually revealed that Andrea had made it back to mom's house on Chickadee after she left Aaron's house that night. It appears that she never went inside mom's house when she made it over there in the early morning hours. She hung around the property for some time until the phone died. How? So she made it back from her. So she left her mom's house, went to her sister's house, went from her sister's house back to her mom's house, Google um, tracking on your phone when you're logged into Google, had her at the residency and was there for some hours outside. So we'll continue here. And why didn't she go into the house? It's a question that still can't be answered. That's her life. This is, this is Louisville, Kentucky. This is where this takes place. Last known location. And from that point, she essentially vanished. At 6.31 a.m., Andrea's phone shuts off. Something isn't adding up. Well, the phone records revealed that she had spoken to a few people during. Hold on one second here. We're going to go back. I want to play. It said something. I don't know what time it said. So hold on here. It might echo just for one second. Well, the phone records revealed. That She essentially vanished at 6 31 a.m andrew so it says 6 31 a.m we're gonna continue on and uh watch the rest of this here Andrea's phone shuts off something isn't adding up well, the phone records revealed that she had spoken to a few people during during this back and forth between mom and and her sister aaron's house she was seeking out a ride she was calling people saying, hey, can you come get me? Um, and those kinds of things. Nothing that would have indicated any kind of imminent danger that she may have been in or anybody that would have come and wanted to do her any harm. Nobody in those phone conversations or messages agreed to come pick her up. From there, her trail goes cold. It's a bizarre timeline. Nothing seems to make sense. Hey, uh... This is Investigator Tracy Leonard. Just wanted to uh, give everybody a quick update. When news of Andrea's disappearance goes public, her former co-worker takes matters into his own hands. We did uh, multiple interviews. We uh, have developed some, some pretty good leads and we're continuing to stay focused and go forward. He has his own company and he volunteered to help Andrea and to help us uh, find her. He knew her really well. We have been door to door on several houses, um, but if you have a security camera, please look on uh, on your video to see if possibly Andrea's on it. Keep vigilant, keep your eyes open. We are staying positive and we're checking every lead out we can. We received tips that, that Andrea had been spotted in the Newburgh area of Louisville, which is not too far from Fincastle. And we went out, talked to witnesses, knocked on any doors that we that we thought, you know, could have been 
a good possibility. Several fields and wooded areas in the area have been searched by countless amounts of people. And the amount of social media attention that, that this case has gotten has helped get the word out to try to locate Andrea. We've had sightings and nothing has panned out. Nothing. It feels like you're reaching your hand out, like with your palm down and you're grabbing water and no matter how hard you try, you can't do it. And that's how it feels what I'm looking for. Erin will never stop searching for her missing sister and mother of two, Andrea Knabel. Andrea was always there for me. She was very selfless. And that's one thing that motivates me to, to keep looking for her. I know for a fact she'd do it for me. As far as Andrea's whereabouts, there's many theories out there. We're keeping all possibilities open. I'm really hopeful that she could be okay and, and that she chose to leave. It's possible that she might have had some type of mental breakdown or emotional breakdown. A lot of uh, her personal challenges had come to a head on the night of August the 12th and, and August the 13th. There was some mental health concerns by the family. She got very angry. So, so her phone shut off at 6.31 p.m., right? Or, I'm sorry, 6.31 a.m. at the house where she was calling for rides. Hmm. That's, uh, I figured mental health was involved. Maybe, but if she was asking for rides and it was 6.31 uh, AM, that's pretty early in the morning to be calling people for rides. Um, hmm. Interesting. We're going to continue on here. When she learned that they were trying to get her mental health help, I don't know if that was cause for her to take off out of anger. You know, the reality of it is maybe did she commit suicide? We, we don't know. When I think about that situation, it just doesn't sound like her at all. Like, it just doesn't match anything she's ever done in her life. So far, investigators have struggled to narrow the field of possibilities. You know, did she walk away on her own accord? Um, did somebody have a hand in this? Was, was anybody else involved? Someone might have seen her walking and looking sad, and they might have taken advantage of that. That's definitely something we've thought about. At this point in the investigation, there still are no signs of any foul play. There's no indication that anybody wanted to do Andrea any harm. However, we are not ruling out anything. We are still actively working uh, the case of Andrea. We're continuing to dig through any potential phone records, any personal relationships that she may have had around the time or leading up to her disappearance. We're, we're not giving up. We're still gonna drive forward. We're gonna find her because she's a mom and her babies need her. This is my sister, Andrea, and her missing flyer. Um, if you could share this on social media as many times as you possibly can, that, that helps tremendously to get the word out. Life just hasn't been the same without her, so we really hope to get her back soon. So, uh, you heard her sister. The biggest thing to do is to share the poster out, get her face out there everywhere. Um, showing awareness is huge in these missing people's cases. The more people that see the poster, the better it is. Uh, all it takes is that one second to get an image in your brain. And then you, you will, you will, if you see somebody, you'll be like, where do I know you from? And then you'll sit there and think and think and think and, and hopefully it clicks right away. But a lot of times it takes a minute for people to remember. So uh, the more posters that we all share, the better it is for the missing people. Um, I'm going to take this down just for one second here. Uh, this thing is very interesting to me. What we're going to play next, I believe. Oh, I want to read. So there's a couple sightings. So what I want to do here is let me... Uh, Uh, 
Uh, hold on here one second. I want to see if I can find the post that uh, that she had posted about the sightings here, and we'll read them here real quick before I go into this next piece. Um, so they were put there, but please help share this to help her mother find her. Oh, uh, that's another missing person. So Aaron does a good job of putting a. Uh, tweeting out posters of other missing people and uh here it is all right we're gonna go over this and then i'm gonna go into the i'm gonna take myself off the screen for a second um just so i can read this to you so you guys can see this in full screen here all right we will start here number one i found her um I'm up here at the top. So it says, where is she? A 24-hour laundry mat on Breston. What address? Uh, I swear I could have seen Andrea last night. It looked just like her. I asked her what her name was, and she said Andrea. I had a couple of friends look at her and give me an opinion. And one said absolutely it was her. And the other said they didn't think so. It was, it was at 24-7 Laundry Mat on Preston Highway. She even said she used to live off Taylor Boulevard. So we're going to go over here. Um, and I believe this is, uh, I don't want to say it's wrong, but I think it's uh, her sister that wrote this. Like that wrote the this rest of the stuff to explain this. Dad and I started our week with one of the craziest and dangerous sighting situations we have had so far. On Sunday, uh, two separate people messaged me to say they saw Andrea at a 24-7 laundry on Preston Highway. It was such a good feeling to think this could be her after feeling like all hope of her uh, return of her returning alive was unrealistic. One that was most responsive said the woman was named Andrea and even said uh, she lived off Taylor Boulevard as our Andrea had. She was currently with Andrea. My kids were asleep at this point and I didn't have a babysitter. So I called 911 to have them check this out and called our dad and he went to look for Andrea. As I called, I spoke with the woman who was with Andrea. She said Andrea was okay, but very out of it. Next thing you know, my dad wrecked his car. A deer jumped over a guardrail onto the hood. That was my worst nightmare coming true. Uh, that I sent my dad out in harm's way. I was so scared that he was hurt and needed my help. Luckily, the deer hit his car just right where it dented the hood and didn't go through the, his windshield. He was okay as he continued on to the laundromat. I asked for her to take a picture of Andrea. The picture looked nothing like Andrea. I told dad and he wanted to check anyway since two people said it. I told him, I'm so, so sorry for this. I asked the woman on the phone to ask her for her last name, and she told me the girl said uh, Knabel, uh, but pronounced it wrong. I know my sister would never say uh, Knabel wrong, so alarms, so alarms went off in my mind. I was worried that it was some kind of setup, so I got off the phone and called Dad quickly. I asked him to stay in his car until police arrived. Of course, he said he's not worried about it. I was so glad that the police arrived before him and they determined she's not my sister. There have been two more sightings since Sunday. One was from Andrea's guidance counselor when she went to U of L. I want to leave you all with this. If you received multiple detailed leads that your daughter, sister was alive and needed your help, and even from people who knew her, would you ignore these? 
or would you check every single one while also focusing on other possibilities and theories? Um, All right, I'm going to play this uh, video here real quick. It's a matter of getting stuff uh, figured out in this one. Um, this is an episode off of... Facebook has nothing to do with Dr. Phil or Dr. Phil's website. Uh, so that's all right. What we'll do is we'll show the poster here real quick. Um, hold on here one second. All right. So here's Andrea Knabel. Um, she is 40 years old, five foot seven, 109 pounds, brown hair with blonde highlights, hazel green eyes, uh, no tattoos, missing since August 13th, 2019 from Audubon Park in Louisville, Kentucky. Call uh, 502-574-7120 or the private investigator at 502-618-9337. Um, hold on here one second. Uh, I'm back when... All right. So uh, there are other ways audio... Yeah, um, I'm not disappointed in, in the fact I, I guess I pushed it too far anyways. Um, but this is one, that there's a whole bunch of other footage and a whole bunch of other stuff from other places that we'll be taking a look at. And um, on this note, we're going to end this one so that I could get back to uh, showing some other cases and stuff. And then I'm going to edit out all the Dr. Phil stuff out of this uh, video. So, um uh, I do know that Arctic put out quite a few videos or several videos today. Uh, stop by, go take a look. If you haven't been by checking convictions, uh, very impressed with their thumbnails lately. So um, you guys should check out some of those videos on the awareness people. Uh, Sun Chen still continuing on posters and uh, only facts TV over there. Um, is always working on some stuff. She's always tweeting stuff out. Uh, it's definitely uh, well noticed. Uh, and if you haven't subbed to Mississippi Granny, please do. Um, I'm starting a campaign to get Mississippi Granny um, a, at least a community wall so she can start uh, putting stuff out. So um, we will, as always, if you see something, say something. Welcome to my channel, Level Headed with Levi D. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button, and set the bell notification to all. If you currently are not getting my notifications, please turn the bell setting to none and turn back on to all. Please also share this. Let's get into it. <music> Hey, uh. Don't wait up, I've been working
working hard every day, living dreams for a pay stub. Yeah, straight up. Five years later, like I said, I would make it on my way up. It's all up. Coming from the nation, made a foundation. True stuff, yeah, too tough. We ain't giving up on our dreams, everything is ahead of us. Stay true to your path, it's not where you start, it's all where you're at. It's where you end up when your back's to the mat. Do you cripple the flat or get up off your back? Deliver these facts to see them react. The stadium's packed, they all gonna snap. The motivated attract, the isolated attack. 